Thank you for watching. I'm Avi and this is Devar Malcolm. We are on page 41, Parsha Sa, from Shabbos Hagadol, the 8th of Nisan, 1991. We dedicate this to the first Shlame of Ariel David Ben Simcha. May it be speedily. We're on page 41. Nisan, the month of Gula. The month of Nisan. Chodesh Hagula. The month of Gula is called so because of its central time, central theme, the festival of Pesach, the time of our freedom, which is especially emphasized on the Shabbos before Pesach. The name of the month Nisan is connected to the word Nes, meaning and more Nisan, with two letters Nun indicating miracles above miracles, the miracles and wonders which the Kaddish Baruch Hu did for the Jewish people during this month when he took them out of Egypt was especially symbolized the miracles conduct distinctive of this month. This theme of miracles above miracles is further emphasized on the Shabbos before Pesach, from which the festival of Pesach is blessed, which is called Shabbos Hagadol, the great Shabbos, because of a great miracle which took place on that day, the miracle of the Egyptians who were smitten by their own firstborn. As the Alter Remy explains at great length in his Shulchan Aruch, and our sages established this miracle to be remembered for our generations, and gave it the name Shabbos Hagadol. And more, on Shabbos Hagadol, there took place the beginning of the redemption and the miracles of the Exodus from Egypt, which is why we say on this day, the portion of the Haggadah, beginning, and we were slaves. Hevid Hayena. We need to understand why it's the miracle of the Egyptians smitting by their own firstborn, especially referred to as first. A great miracle, more than any other miracles? How does this express the greatness of the miracle? And this is the beginning of the redemption and the miracles of the exodus from Egypt. The first sight, this is only another miracle amongst the miracles which took place in Egypt. Also, we need to eludicate the connection of this miracle specifically with the day of Shabbos, that our sages established the miracle as a remembrance for our generation on Shabbos and gave it the name Shabbos Hagadol, even though there was a reason for this. Nevertheless, we are bound to say, as, as is known, the great precision of everything within Torah, the days fixtures according to Torah, that this miracle has an inner connection with Shabbos, that this Shabbos is called Shabbos Hagadol. Also, the connection of the beginning of the Gula and miracles with Shabbos Hagadol gains greater emphasis this year in the first day of Pesach when the Gula and actual exodus from Egypt took place, which was on the day of Shabbos. Moshe has a deep connection with the Gula and the power to redeem the Jewish people. On the principal theme of the Gula from Egypt, emphasized in the Torah, is that the Gula was, per was performed by Moshe Rabbeinu, the Redeemer of Israel, as the Torah tells us at great length that Hashem specifically selected Moshe to be the Redeemer of Israel. Even when Moshe begged the Kaddish Baruch to send, please, by the hand of the one who will ultimately send, Hashem did not accept this request because Hashem specifically wanted Moshe to be the emissary to redeem the Jewish people. From here, we can understand that it is Moshe who has a deep connection with the Gula, which is why it's specifically he who had the power to redeem the Jewish people. This is such an extent that our sages say regarding Moshe, he is the first redeemer and he is the final redeemer according to the Zohar. Moshe called the final redeemer even with regard to the true and complete Gula from the last exile, which will be our righteous Mashiach of which it is written, as in the days of your exodus from Egypt, I will show you wonders, especially as known that the redemption from Egypt was the head and origin of all future redemption, including also the future Gula, since the Gula, every Gula, comes specifically from the power of Moshe. And this is the power to bring the Gula to the Jewish people can only be by Moshe Rabbeinu, the redeemer of the Jewish people. The explanation of this is as follows. The purpose of the redemption from Egypt is and I have taken you for myself as a nation, and I will be for you, for you, Elohim, and you shall know that I am Hashem your God who has taken you from below the burdens of Egypt, and I am Hashem your God who has taken you out from the land of Egypt, namely that the revelation of godliness in this world with the Gula from Egypt is that the Jewish people are in the world, will see this, recognize, and know the Kaddish Baruch Hu, and accept upon them the Latin at Matan Torah, Torah and mitzvot of the Kaddish Baruch Hu, and that by their avoda reveal godliness as a permanent and eternal feature into their lives and their portion in the world, as was performed by the Mishkan, the purpose of the exodus from Egypt and Ma'an Torah. And they shall make for me a Mishkan, and I will reside amongst them. This was yet to become further established in the Beis Hamikdash, the first and second, culminating in the ultimate perfection of the third Beis Hamikdash. 
the Migdash of Hashem, which your hands have prepared, O Hashem, the eternal temple, in the true and complete Gula, thereby also to reveal godliness into the world in such a way until the completion of this in the future, when the entire world and all of humanity will recognize and see godliness openly and completely, and the glory of Hashem will be revealed, and all flesh together will see that the mouth of Hashem has spoken. This is also the reason for why the redemption from Egypt came specifically by way of open miracles and wonders, because it is specifically by way of miracles, which is loftier than the natural order, there is revealed openly before the human eye the unlimited power of the Hakarish Brahman, that they recognize that Hashem is master over the material world, and the natural world. This is why it is within Hashem's power to perform a miracle which is above or alters the nature of the order of the, order of the world. Olam, an expression for Ha'olam Ha'siter, concealment and cover-up, the nature of Teva, an explanation of Tibor Bim. They, soldiers of Paro, were sunken into the sea, which covers and conceals the active power of HaKadosh Baruch within nature. And this gave, and continues to give, the strength of Jewish people who witness open miracles, that they be in the mindset of Gula redemption, freedom from the structures and measures and limitations of the world, and from the slavery to world cultures and from the idol worship of the Egyptian Mitzrayim, an expression of Mitzrayim, structures and limitations of the world in general and exile in particular, which began from the exile of Egypt, which became the time of our freedom, true freedom from all limitations, including those of the cover over garments of the natural order, even miracles wrapped in nature as was the miracle of Horeb. This will be the perfection of the true and complete Gula, when, as in the days of the Exodus from Egypt, I will show you wonders, wonders entirely above the way of nature, as were the miracles of the Exodus from Egypt, and even more, wonders even compared to the miracles of the Exodus from Egypt, as I will show them, Kaddish Baruch himself will show them, and at the time everything of godliness will be revealed, both those relative to revelation and those hidden and concealed. There will become apparent truth and the inwardness of the natural order, the fruitful panoramic view of the miraculous, even the absolute wondrous, and the power to bring Gula to the Jewish people, the revelation of godliness in the world, comes specifically by Moshe Rabbeinu, the Redeemer of Israel, as we will explain. It was specifically the prayer of Moshe which brought the Shekhinah to reside permanently in the Mishkan. This will be understood by explaining the essential theme and innovation of Moshe, who parallels the innovation of the Gula, which is why the Gula can only be brought by Moshe, which is expressed in the book of Tehillim, Psalm Sadiq, 19, number 90, which we begin to say these days with open words, a prayer by Moshe, a godly man, and concludes, may the pleasant of our master, our, our God, be upon us, and the works of our hands established upon us, and the work of our hands established, and specifically, and the specialty of this psalm is that, is that it is was, was said by Moshe Rabbeinu, a prayer by Moshe, the first of eleven psalms, and here till the David Mizmor, and said by Moshe that it is understood from here that the psalm expresses the essence of the avoda and activity of Moshe by his prayer, his activities amidst the Jewish people in the world. As our sages say, may the pleasantness of my master and Hashem be upon us. The conclusion of this psalm is the blessing and prayer of Moshe with respect to the residing of the Divine Presence in the Mishkan. He said to them, the Jewish people, may it be the Divine Will that the Shechina, that the Shechina reside in the work of your hands, and may the pleasantness of my Master, our God, be upon us. Meaning that it was specifically the prayer of Moshe who brought, which brought the Shechina to reside in the Mishkan in a way that the work of our hands establish upon us permanently for all generations even to reach the perfection of the third temple, as our sages state in Midrash Tehillim on the verse, and establish the work of our hands. These words are directed towards the third base of Mikdash, over which Hakagrosh Baruch says, in the future I will bring it and make my divine presence rest within it, and never again will it be destroyed. And to draw down the permanent revelation of godliness requires two extremities together. The explanation of this required introduction. We need to understand the rest the reason for the precision repetition of the wording, the theme both in the beginning of the psalm number 90 and its conclusion, what is the reason for the repetition, Tehila le Moshe, a prayer by Moshe, and after the description given of him, a godly man. Similarly, the end of the psalm, may the pleasance of my master our God be upon us, 
and the work of our hands be established upon us, and the repetition and establish the work of our hands. One explanation of this, in order to draw down and reveal the godliness permanently, and I will reside among them as to be upon us requires two extremities, and their bonding together. Number one, a power loftier than the natural conduct of the world to bring into the world the revelation of godliness unseen in a world from the expression, concealment, and cover up as it is even able to change the world to be a vessel for the revelation of godliness especially that this is to be permanent and eternal requires a special power since the world is composed of time and created beings change over time and ultimately all beings disintegrate the, and secondly the power needs to descend and clothe itself to become comparable to the parameters of the world as known that one who comes to refine others needs to be clothed himself in the parameters of his subject only then is he able to achieve that his subject becomes a vessel, a place of permanent, a purse of permanence, a bill able to receive the revolution inward. Different, however, it would should be the revelation to be incomparably above the receipt. And refinement would not remain the permanent, but would only encompass this subject, and over the course of time it could withstand. Moshe Rabbeinu is the intermediary bonding the Hakadosh Baruch with the Jewish people, as the verse says, "I stand between Hashem and yourselves." And these two attributes are the reason for the repetition, the opening, and the conclusion of Psalm Tzadik, 19, number 90, and were complete and revealed with Moshe Rabbeinu, and he is the intermediary bonding Hakadosh Baruch and the Jewish people, as the verse says, "I stand between Hashem and yourselves." And an intermediary necessarily needs to have an attribute of each of the sides he is binding together on the words a godly man our sages say that if he is godly why is he described as a man and if he is merely a man why is he described as godly they answer that he was a combination of both his lower half a man his upper half godly and since he had both these attributes a man and godly moshe had the strength to bond godliness with the world as was openly seen in the mishkan built by moshe in general detail, these two extremities needed to be an intermediary are the two descriptive attributes, Moshe and a godly man, the double expression of the opening of the psalm. Even though the attribute of godly man describes the bond between two extremities, a man and godly, as they are one man, Moshe, yet the name used here for godly, Elohim, has a numerical value of 86, the same as Hatava. The natural order refers to the level of godly energy enclosed within and gives life to the natural order. This is why it is written, a godly man, and a man, Ish, from his lower half, describes how Moshe is connected with the world, but unified only with godliness relative to the creation, but not with Havaya, Yudke Vavke, and Hashem, which is Hashem's essence, the revelation of godliness more lawfully than the world, which was created with the divine name, Elohim. In the beginning, Elohim created. Different, however, is the description given as Moshe, written before, is reference to he was drawn out of the water of the Nile from the divine name said by Moshe himself and of Aaron, what are we? The name above godliness, which is more lofty than creation, which was created with the divine name Elohim. Well known is the explanation of this, that the source of the soul of Moshe is from the most lofty height, the spiritual category of Mayim, a hidden world above the earth, and dry land where humans live, and it was from there, from within the spiritual water, that the spirit of Mo that the soul of Moshe was drawn into the revealed world, even into this material world, in such a way that even as a soul, and then a body here below, the heavenly spiritual waters are openly revealed to him, as he openly cleaves to his source above, as the fish of the sea, which are continuously openly connected to their source of life, the waters of the ocean. Consequently, full description of the opening of the psalm indicates both soul qualities of Moshe. First, Moshe represents his bonding in this world with godliness above creation, giving the power to reveal godliness here below and even to alter the world and draw down eternity, unlimited divine energy to this world. And second, a godly man, his bond as a man with godliness within creation, giving the energy to draw down godliness to Jewish people as souls within bodies in the world whereby they are able to become vessels as they are permanent for the revelation within the creation and even I will reside among them, a revelation of godliness from above. Moshe did not die in every generation, this is according to the Zohar, 
every generation there is an extended presence of motion. Accordingly, we understand the repetition at the end of the psalm, and the work of our hands be established upon us, and the work of our hands establish it. Since Moshe Rabbeinu, the bonding intermediary, had both qualities, Moshe and a godly man, this is why Moshe here below has the, both the qualities of eternal and permanence, unlimited power, openly, as is hinted by the continuation of the psalm, you have been a shelter for us in every generation before the mountains came into being. Forever and ever, you are almighty. Indeed, a thousand years are in your eyes as yesterday has passed. In this, why does eternity descend? into time also to Moshe, a godly man, that he is subject to godliness. Eternity with Moshe himself, as the Talmud said, Moshe did not die. And in every generation there is an extent to the presence of Moshe. This is in addition to the presence of Moshe within every one of Israel. The same is true of his power and the details of his being, that even the works of his hands of Moshe, the Mishkan which Moshe built, are eternal. This is why it was specifically within the power of Moshe to draw down the Shina by his tefillah. May the pleasantness of my master, our God, be upon us. May it dwell with the divine will that the Shina rests within the work of your hands and established upon us permanently for all generations that this, the work of you, our hands, be established, referencing the eternity of the third base of Mikdash, never to be destroyed. And just as Moshe had both qualities, Moshe and a godly man, so also there is two qualities, a double expression of the blessing of Tefillah of Moshe. May the pleasantness draw down the Shina into the Mishkan, godliness from above the world, that this be enclosed deeply within the world here below. This is an indication by the reputation within the Psalm's final verses. First, and the work of our hands be established upon us, an encompassing above us that, is his, that this level of godliness is without limits. And secondly, that and the work of our hands establish it, that he has shem strengthened the work of our hands itself, and the establishment permeates, permeates also within the work of our hands, and not only as established above us. Usually a double expression indicates the existence of something for eternity, as is double success, that this is not only meaning double, but more both in quality and in fortitude, and the double expression are also connected to the gula. A psalm, a song for the day of Shabbos, Psalm 92. The opening letters of these four words spell the Moshe, the greater detail. Mizmor Shir Le Yom HaShabbat. Mem Shin Lamed He. A greater detail according to the eludication of Rashi in this double expression. The repetition by the psalm, the established of the work of our hands is for the work of the Mishkan for which Moshe blessed the Jewish people and prayed that Tashina reside in the work of their hands in the Mishkan and also once that there be a blessing in the works of their hands. Accordingly, one could say that this repetition indicates the double blessings by Moshe, that the work of our hands be eternal both in the work of our hands in the matter of a holiness as the building of the Mishkan and also the work of our hands in one's regular activities, your activities and your ways, even though these are activities connected to the normal conduct of the world, nevertheless Moshe brought these into brought these brought into these the power of eternity, and establishment, the work of our hands. Further, opening words of the psalm, a prayer by Moshe, is actually a part of the Shabbos prayer. Therefore, it's understood that this tefillah has a special connection to Shabbos especially that a psalm, a song for the Shabbos day, is part of the prayer for Moshe, one of the 11 psalms composed by Moshe, which is why Moshe insert his name into the psalm. The connection is as follows. On the verse, a psalm, a song for the Shabbos day, is Morshir le Yom HaShabbat, our sages comment, Midrash Tehillim, the activities of Shabbos is double, is explained in many sources. That the double expression is, in fact, two levels, two Shabbos within each Shabbos, the Erev of Shabbos and the Shabbos day. According to the Zohar, tranquility, re, tranquility relative to toil and tranquility is, is in essence. This is the difference between the divine name Elohim, godliness relative to crea creation, and divine name Havaya, Yudkevavke, godliness above the creation. That on the Shabbos, both come together double. One could say that this parallel, the double expression of the opening of Psalm 90, a tefillah by Moshe, Abaya and a godly being. Also at the end of the same psalm, number 90, may the pleasant of my master, our God, be upon us. 
that pleasantness is the level of Shabbos, as the building of the Mishkan, and the work of our hands established upon us, and the work of our hands established yet, refer both to tranquility relative to toil, of the activities of our hands, and tranquility in essence upon us. This is a wider perspective. Establish the work of our hands of the days of the week. For six days you shall work and pursue all of your activities, and the work of our hands be established upon us on the days of Shabbos when all your work has been completed. Shabbos is comparable to Moshe, connected to attorney, as is known that on every Shabbos there is a similarity to the ultimate day, time period, which is eternally one Shabbos and tranquility for all living eternity when there will be a perfect revelation of the essence of tranquility, eternal tranquility, and the gula immediately will be revealed, really, immediately we, will we be redeemed, comes by observing two Shabbos, according to the Hacha, two levels within each Shabbos. A prayer by Moshe, a godly person, Psalm 90, the letter, the letter Zadik, and Psalm 90, accordingly the reason of the tefillah, a prayer by Moshe, a godly man, and so, Psalm Tzaddik, both from the perspective of the number 90, as the letter Tzaddik, 90, three times in titles ownership, Hazak, being an impression, expression of strength, that by continued presence or, or redemption, three times, becomes established, strengthened, and remains forever, and the full perfection of the strength of authenticity, of authenticity of the three times itself is 90, which is three times 30. 3 times 10. This is the perfection of any number when it's inclusive of 10 because the number 10 is the perfection of the number indicating perfection, which is why the future gula, the entire gula, is connected to the number 10 with a 10-string instrument, the 10th song, the 10th red heifer of Moshiach. Accordingly, 10 times 3, 30, is complete strength, complete more than 3, 6, 9, and 90, 3 times 30, is complete perfection of strength. The Hebrew letter tzaddik, the regular way whereby our sages write this letter in full, tzaddik, without the letter kuf at the end. In many places they write it as uh, tzaddik, dalad, yud, and then uh, kuf with a couple of lines. Um, which is connected to the level of righteous man, Sadi, which is the sphere of Yasa, uh, meaning foundation, as the verse, a Tzadi, a righteous man, is the foundation of the world. We find in holy books, as is known by the great precision of all manners of Torah, specifically the holiness of the Hebrew letters, that in every Hebrew letter written down out in full has a meaning, that Tzadi is the expression of Tzad, meaning side, according to it, it is understood that the word Sadi means my Hashem, my Hashem Sai. This concept in one of Oda's Hashem, Kaddish Baruch who created man and the world in such a way that there be two sides, one opposite the other, the side of holiness and the opposing side, the good inclination, the right side of the heart and the right ventricle, and the evil inclination on the left side. Now since Moshe commanded us, the Torah, as an inheritance for the community of Yaakov to every single Jewish person, it is self-understood that Sadi, my side, the side of the Jewish people, is that of Torah and mitzvahs. The laws of the Torah, how a Jew is to conduct himself in the world. Differently, however, the opposing side has no connection with Hashem and most certainly is not his side. However, from a different perspective, this is called my side, only my side and not me, my very being. Since HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world by his divine name Elohim, the world appears as an independent side. One side opposite the other did Elohim create a world which conceals and hides godliness. The lowest of the worlds with no lower world in terms of concealing the light of Hashem, where one does not naturally sense the need to abide by the directives of the Torah, and one, and one is able even to conduct himself contrary to Torah, God forbid. The purpose of this is that we overturn the world, and also the side of the world as it exists agrees to the guidelines and directive of the Torah, and only then will this be deeply established in the lower world. According to this, the question can arise even regarding which is permanent, and not necessarily the opposite side. How can a Jew go out and overturn the actual world and the people in the world as they are, that they conduct themselves according with the guidelines and directives of Torah, and even enforce the entire world population to accept upon themselves the commandments of the Noahide laws? 
as a Jew has. One, as a Jew, one has the responsibility because of the Torah dependent on the Jewish people that was given for the sake of the Jewish people, which is why Hashem's thought of the Jewish people before Torah prior to creation as is written in the Torah. Command and pre-existing Jewish people. Speak to the Jewish people. The life of a Jew depends on the Torah. It is our life and the length of our days. So the question is, since we are since we are responsible, how can one create for Hashem a residence in the lower world as they exist? The response, this is why HaKadosh Baruch Hu created a Jew as he descended into this world, soul within a body, as if he stands on the side as a bystander, that this is essential. Connection to Torah and mitzvahs does not force him and does not cause him any overt inclination to conduct himself accordingly. Rather, the matter should be handled in on his own freedom of choice, and he should make the choice, and you should choose life, the side of Torah and mitzvahs. Therefore, he has no particularity since he is not enforced but to conduct himself in one specific direction and has options of both the side of good and the opposite, both sides given their opinions. However, there is an added letter of Yud to the side, because the divine intention here is, and you should choose life, select the right side that it be Hashem's side, Sadi, and then when he selects to abide by his godly soul, then Kaddish Baruch Hu helps him, because Hashem stands on the right hand side of the needy to save him from those who wish to accuse his soul. A Jew has within him both attributes of Moshe, Moshe and a godly man, is able to overturn the entire world. This is comparable to the two attributes of Moshe, Moshe and Ish. A godly man has a soul and a body, every, as is every Jew. One is as Moshe, named so because he was drawn from the spiritual waters from above the world. One is openly connected to godliness with, there are no waters other than Torah. Remember the Torah of Moshe, my servant. The Torah is master over the world. Gray sheets, the creation was solely for the sake of the Torah in Israel. And with this power, one is able to overturn the world and to draw down the revelation of godliness. And as one man is, one's lower half appears from one's corporal aspect to be similar to the bodies of the Gentile nations. Therefore, it is as if he stands at the side and he can make the choice and you shall choose life. And that one is able to raise oneself to becoming a godly man, my Hashem's side. Accordingly, since one makes the conscious selection for Hashem's side of Torah and mitzvahs, and not as one who has a personal interest, but by his choice, being outwardly a man, soul within a physical body in the world, one has the ability to overturn the world and the inhabitants of the world, that they should also agree to abide by the instructions of Torah to become established chiefly within them, since he, this correlates to them as we have spoken. Thereby it is possible that godliness be drawn and revealed through the world as permanent. A tzaddik written with the final letter kuf, which descends below, line of writing is able to reach and overturn the world's lowliest extremes. We still need to understand, as we have spoken above, of the avoda of tzaddik, the drawing down of godliness into the permeated areas of the world, into the natural world, created by the divine name Elohim, which indeed conceals godliness, but is not opposed to God. That the avoda of refining the world is by enclosing oneself in God as a godly man, Elohim. The parameters of the world should also be internalized in this. However, when we speak of the entire world needing to become a residence for Hashem in the lower world, a permanent residence, it is understood that there cannot remain a single corner in the world which resists godliness, heaven forbid, because then the entire residence remains lacking a permanent and eternity. Therefore, how is it within our capacity to also affect the opposing side, a location which already in the past has been, stum has been a stumbling block contrary to Torah, may Hashem protect us. Therefore, we are bound to say that by a prayer of, uh, of Moshe, a godly man, which gives the strength to draw down godliness in a permanent way, reaches, this, reaches the lowest extremes of the world and is also able to overturn these. This is indicated by the additional letter of Kuf added to Tzadi, creating the word Tzadik. Tzadik, the final letter of Kuf, descended below the line of writing that a man of supreme righteousness is able to reach and overturn even the lowliest extremes of this world, as we will explain. Bitya, even still as the, or sorry, Batya, Batya, even still as the daughter of Para, Para saw the Shina with Moshe and drew him out of the war. Commentary we have, we have given earlier that Moshe was so named because of Min Hamayim 
Tamishi, Tamishi who? He was drawn out of the waters of the Nile River. Indicates the revelation of the divine name, Abaya, Yudke Babke, of the above world from the hidden world. There begs to be asked a simple question. These waters from which Moshe was drawn were the waters of the Nile River, and she, Miriam, placed the casket amongst the reeds of the edge of the river, meaning adjacent to the idol worshippers of Egypt. And further, also, it was specifically the daughter of Paro, king of Egypt, the most incestuous country on earth, who draw out Moshe from the water and gave Moshe his name Moshe because he was drawn out of the waters, and that he was specifically referred to by his name despite the fact that he had ten other names. How is, it, how is this appropriate, given the insight of Hasidus that these waters are referenced to hidden spiritual waters di diametrically opposed to idol worship and para? The explanation to this is that only in a way that could this... The explanation to this is that only in this way could this be achieved, that which has the loftiest at source falls to the lowest of extremities. In order to reach godliness above the parameters of the earth, it is imperative that it be specifically the daughter of Paro who is needed. This is indicated by her name, Badya, an expression of Bat, daughter, represent from... Uh, from Yud and He, a divine name even loftier than the name Havaya, that it be she who draws Moshe from the place of idol worship out of the water, uh, the Nile River, and thereby could there be a revelation he was drawn out of the water, the revelation of Moshe from the hidden spiritual world into this revealed world. According to this, one could say that Moshe was in a cast at amid the knees, the reeds of the edge of the river. According to this, one could say that Moshe was in a cast amid the reeds by the edge of the river, adjacent to the place of idol worship. The Nile River, spiritually lower than man, the lower half of man, but was protected by the casket, which is the norm of things, was open from above. That Moshe, while was in the casket, was open to the heavens, and being there, that Baya saw, still the daughter, still as the daughter of Paro, the Shina was with him. And she thereafter drew him out of the water as specifically the daughter of Paro. And he grew up in the palace of the Paro, the king of Egypt. All of this gave Moshe the fortitude to destroy the Klippa, the idol worship of Egypt, and to redeem the Jewish people from there. Consequently, from the verse, a prayer by Moshe, a godly man, there is an allusion to a third theme. Additional to the avoda of Elohim, the revelation of godliness comparable to the world, Moshe, the revelation of divine name, yud Vavke from above the creation. The avoda of the purification of lowest extremes, extremities in the world. This theme is indicated by the opening words of the psalm, Phila le Moshe, prayer by Moshe, as explained in Hasidus, that is the prayer of the spiritually wealthy, connected to the essence of God, loftier than Havaya and Elohim. And Elohim. The godly energy both encompassing and within creation, which bonds both together, that is with that it is with the power of godly essence, eternally above and disconnected from the world, that the godliness is drawn throughout the world to all of its level, even the very lowliest extremes, and this er, very lowliest low, lowest extremities, and this, and as his will be perfected with the true and complete gula, when I will remove the spirit of uncleanliness from the world, and there will be no more wars and the preoccupation of the entire world will be exclusively to attain knowledge of God. The revelation of many of the pleasantness of my Master, our God, be upon us, the future world which is called pleasantness, the essence of delight which will be even drawn down into the work of our hands, will be established upon us, and he will establish the work of our hands as at the end of the psalm. Within Moshe there are two themes, the revelation of the divine name Havaya, the hidden world, godliness, loftier than world, and Moshe, at the end of the level, tefillah le Moshe, an expression of tefel, meaning secondary, in connection to Hashem's essence. Perhaps we could say that this corresponds to the two levels within the divine name Havaya itself, the category of the name Havaya, one, and this is loftier than any divine name, two. The avoda of the He, by which the world was created to its purify place below the line as the Kuf. Accordingly, we can explain that which was indicated in Psalm 90, Sadiq, the additional letter Kuf, after 
at the end of the at the end of the word, well known is the commentary with the Hebrew letter He. This that the world was created. The letter He composed of three lines, as they are three levels in the world: Bria, Yetzirah, and Asiya, thought, speech, and action. The roof of roof and right leg, which are joined, are thought and speech, and the left leg, which is separated, is as material world, as the verse says, Yeshaya described, I have also made it. The word also, signifying a separation, created to appear as, as an independent world. Since the world was created complete, it is understood that even through this was created by the letter He, concealing the connection with the higher spiritual. Nevertheless, the word is complete, since Kaddish Braho created it with the name Elohim. Elohim, a word for concealing godliness, and the Avoda in the world is with a tzaddi, to select Torah and mitzvahs, to be the side of the Jewish people. Thereafter follows the avoda of the letter kuf. Kuf, sorry. The letter kuf on the letter kodesh, holiness. And one arrives even to this place, originally brought on by sin, that the letter he becomes the letter kuf, that the left leg descends below the line, below the place of how HaKadosh Baruch Hu originally created the world as was intended to be. The divine purpose therein is the world which Elohim created to repair, to be partner with Kadokarosh Baruch Hu in creation, to purify even this place, as did Moshe. And this is the completion and the avoda of, of, of Tzadik, that he draws down from the level of Tzadik, the Torah mitzvahs in his side, also to the Kuf, to below the acceptable line of conduct. Only Moshe is the Redeemer of Israel. Accordingly, we can understand why specifically Moshe is the Redeemer of Israel, with the redemption of Egypt and the first Redeemer of the final Redeemer, because Moshe is the level of a prayer by Moshe, a godly man. He has the power to draw down the Gula, the revelation of unlimited spiritual energy into the world, and to redeem the Jewish people from all the straits and limitations, even from the Klippa and idol worship of Egypt. And with this strength also to bring the true and complete Gula as that as in the days of your exodus from the land of Egypt I will show wonders not only miracles within the natural order Elohim but also open miracles entirely above the natural order even wonders and this will be a Gula never to be followed by any future exile whereby the entire world will be resist resident will be a residence for Hashem a permanent and everlasting residence for all eternity the great miracle of Shabbos Haggadol civil war in Egypt by their own firstborn. With this we will be able to explain the meaning of the great miracle on Shabbos Haggadol and its connection especially with Shabbos, the miracle of Egypt smit by their own firstborn, that the might of the unholy itself, the firstborn of Egypt, struck Egypt, a land filled with idols, and purification by the kuf below the line took place by a revelation of godliness of the highest degree above the miracles which took place for the Jewish people themselves or even miracles performed by Fakarish Baruch Hu, revealing even more the power of eternity and endless power of godliness descending even to that place. Therefore, precisely this is referring to Nes a great miracle then and it was specifically this which brought on the beginning of the Gula and miracles of the redemption of Egypt. The common the co commemoration of this, the commemoration of this great miracle was established especially to be Shabbos, and Shabbos is connected with the eternal Gula, the future period which will be entirely one Shabbos and eternally tranquility. Also the status of Shabbos is double, that a double wording in Torah is also connected to Gula. Therefore the Shabbos when there took place a great miracle, a civil war in Egypt. This overturned the entire Shabbos to become Shabbos Hagadol, the great Shabbos. Therefore, it is this Shabbos that has the fortitude to bless the festival of Pesach. Further, the calendar fixture of this year and several other years, Shabbos Hagadol falls on Shabbos Parsha Sab, that Shav is an expression of action to be taken, taken speedily and for generations to come, emphasizing even more the revelation of eternity here below in this world coming from the unlimited strength of Kakadosh Baruch Hu, commanding Moshe Rabbeinu, Za es ha -ron, command, and you should command Aaron, and through Aaron to reach every single Jew, since Aaron loves Shalom and pursues Shalom, loves people and draws them to Torah, that one has com and command the limitless strength from Kakadosh Baruch Hu, both for now, immediately, and for future generations immediately without any disturbances or delay in carrying out the commandment immediately because one is totally preoccupied 
with this to the extent that this is his life's work entirely imbued within him and for generations that this strength continues with dexterity also the forthcoming generations plural that when there is the strength of three generations one own and two for future generations this becomes eternal for all generations and every activity one undertakes will be successfully established by Hashem Yalkot Shimoni my children do not be fearful the time of your gula has, has arrived that of which we have spoken gains greater in momentum as we find ourselves in the month of Nisan of this year. This will surely be the year which I will show you wonders. As we spoke also in the general letters of the miracles and the wonders which take place in this year, close to Purim, the enemy regime, Saddam Hussein, against the Jewish people was eliminated, and the victory through the enemy to set free America in a good way, a portion of the war captivities, as we have spoken in detail previously. And most certainly, Akadosh Rahu will continue to show miracles and wonders Leading to the ultimate, I will show wonders, the true, complete Gula. That the ongoing war in the part of the world, the king of Persia, Iran, with the king of Ar, Iraq, that they are the signs that should the Gula is coming by a righteous Mashiach, as we find the Yalkut Shimoni, as worded there. My children, do not be fearful. The time of your Gula has revived, and Melech HaMashiach is standing on the roof of the base of Migdash and is making it heard for the Jewish people and says, Humble words. One, humble ones, the time of your gula has arrived. One must evaluate, elevate oneself to the highest degree, reaching a true, great miracle in his avoda. From all of the above, there is an instruction to every Jew in his personal avoda. As we stand in the year, I will show you wonders. And now in the month of Nisan, and in the week of the festival of Pesach, the time of our freedom, and in the light of the events and miracles, which are revealed to the human eye and before the eyes of all nations. This ought to further awaken every Jew's desire and strength to perform his avoda in a miraculous way. Even miracles within miracles is insufficient that he rises above his nature as until now in his learning Torah and performance of mitzvahs beautifully. Rather, one must elevate oneself to the highest degree to go from strength to strength until he reaches a truly great miracle which is connected. Abaye is great and exceedingly praised. And for this there is a special gift for the strength of, Parsha, of Psalm 90, a prayer by Moshe, a man of God. May the, pleasant of, of, may the pleasantness of our Master, our God, be upon us, and the work of our hands establish upon us, and the work of our hands establish it, that the Shekhinah resides in the world of your hands. And Moshe gives the strength to every single Jew, especially coming from Moshe within oneself, impacting one's actual vote, enabling to reveal the tzaddik within oneself. Your nation are tzaddikim, as one is bound to Avaya, who is a tzaddik in all of his ways. Thereby, one's avoda will reach the perfection of tzaddik, that one surrenders oneself entirely to the Torah, to become entirely my side, that there cannot be any other side to one's life, both regarding oneself and also influencing others in spreading Torah, Judaism, and spreading the wellsprings of Hasidus outward, and to influence the nation of the world and the world regarding their seven Noahide laws. And for this, one can make use of an additional event to add to one's Avodah Hashem. By divine providence, there was announced decision, which has a numerical value of Tzadi, number 104, from the House of the Representatives of this country, proxies of the entire nation, empowering by Halakha, the laws of the land is file, final, that on the 11th day of the month of Nisan has been established as Education Day to strengthen the virtuous education of the young generation which is found, which is the foundation of the world habitation for all citizens of this country and the inhabitants of the world and perform this as a sadi, a campaign of righteousness reaching the ends of the earth and with special emphasis to the timely need to provide all the necessities of the festival to those who need it, requirements for the Seder, matzah, the four cups of wine, etc. The general requirements for the Yom Tov, Yom Tov clothes, food, Yom Tov, etc. I would also like to bring attention to of another theme connected to this. In those locations where there are arrangements for public seders, there are several locations where they make preparations just for one seder due to lack of funding. There is the need and it is most advisable to make a great effort to make two seders, at least to divide the expenses for two nights, and certainly they will not have to do this because HaKadosh Baruch will certainly bless and provide those activities with all of their needs and even more. May it be the will of Hashem that there be already fulfilled the prayer of Moshe to the full and the 
and of Moshe within every single Jew. The Moshe Ish Elohim Tefillah, a prayer by Moshe, a godly man. May the pleasantness of my master of God be upon us, and the work of our hands establish upon us, and the work of our hands establish, and the Shechina resides in the works of your hands in our activities in Avodah during the time of exile, and immediately the main point, the third base of Migdash, the Migdash which your hands have already built. And may the Mashiach come with the third base of Migdash immediately, speedily in our days. Thank you for watching.